This is the artist Jeff Harvey called Head First, a self-portrait. And it's a multi-layered panel of self-portraits from when he was young, but also it details elements of his world. There's nostalgic images of music, art, sport and more. And these themes have been con constant throughout his long career as an artist and they help him define who he is. So here we see the artist, his world, and we also see the artwork. And I am the audience. And we also see elements of the frames the cultural frame, the subjective frame, and then if we look closer at how the artist has made the artwork, we see the structural frame. So he's used watercolour, charcoal, ink, crayon, pastel, graphite. And then we can look at also the way that the artist has created this particular artwork by using multi-panelled pieces and put it all together into the one piece. This is an artwork by Ewan McLeod called The Neck um, and it's very much a personal response to trips that he made to Gallipoli in which he documented both the mythology of the place, the, the stories told about the invasion and also his response to the place when he visited. So here we look at the artist referring to his world both in the present from his trips but also referring back to stories from the past to create this particular artwork. So we see the artist responding to his world both through research of history and we also see him referring to um, elements of the stories told by other people by the invasion of Gallipoli. It's a very, um, as far as the artwork is, it's very abstract. There is a representation of a figure, figures, but they're not very realistic. This is a um, painting by the artist Michael Bell. He's a um, quite a renowned Newcastle artist, and this one's um, called Dog Beach, or sorry, Horseshoe Beach, 2015. And he actually has said that this will be his final painting of um, the Dog Beach, which is Horseshoe Beach, as he's painted this actually quite a number of times. Now, in this artwork, it refers to his world because he lives in Newcastle and he he's been inspired by the Horseshoe Beach for quite a number of years in his paintings um, and he talks about his dog personally that he has painted in this artwork. Um, he also refers to other dogs that visit the beach. Um, he uses very um, exaggerated lines and shapes and distortion um, to create his paintings which give them a lot of energy and um, movement so almost like these people are throwing the ball there it's acrylic I think on canvas have a look oh, oil on canvas and it's quite an amazingly lively painting so culturally, this is him and his, his culture of visiting the beach and taking his dog for a walk and, you know, his idea of Newcastle or an element of Newcastle that he loves. And so it has a subjective quality to it because it's also detailing his personal world. This is the Mambo exhibition and as you can see 
We have a collection of surfboards, each by different artists. And what we immediately can tell is that they've all been obviously inspired by surf culture, by using the surfboards and then applying to that their own individual style or concept. Maybe it reflects part of their world or their culture. And the Mambo exhibition is very much um, surrounding surf culture and contemporary beach culture. One of the key in, um, aspects of the Mambo um, artworks were t-shirts or sh and even shirts and as you can see along here this is just a small collection of some of the shirts and again this is quite a um, interesting way of putting artwork out into the world for various audiences to view so it's taking the work outside of the art gallery and into the public domain which has become quite popular now because you can buy t-shirts with lots of different artworks on them these days but done by various artists so the mambo artists were a kind of collective of various artists um, one of the key artists was reg mombasa and we can see his artwork at the bottom here and here we have a lot of the printed Mombasa's artworks are uh, a response to the Australian landscape, so his world. And he's also, he covers other aspects of the environment, um, particular buildings of, that are prominent, religion. Here we see a Mambo theology stained glass window so it's a back backlit box and obviously as you can see they've been inspired by um, religious um, iconic style church uh, stained glass windows but this has got a very much a contemporary twist um, and it refers to again aspects of um, the artist world and this is done by Reg Mombasa so you can see if we close in on some of the panels, um, there's the uh, kind of uh, religious looking um, person playing guitar to the people praying to him. We've got a smokestack factory in the background. There's television and, um, you know, chickens, the suburban house. Um, we've got, you know, a little bit of uh, police brutality in the corner and um, it's telling us a bit of a story, but um, as I said, very much a uh, subjective, because referring to the artist's world and his personal world, um, we can look at the actual cultural aspects of this artwork. The um, postmodern aspects would be that the artist has um, added a twist by using the iconic religious style um, stained glass window with a twist. Here we can see a, another Mambo artist who's created a couple of works in the show. Um, this one's called Mambo Custom and he refers to a lot of you know street machines or cars which probably I'd say would have something to do with his world um, and his interest in that kind of culture um, of customising your car and making it a little bit more fancy as to what it uh, would normally be um, and so we, he refers to the cars you know within this artwork they're very loose um, linear works so he just uses you know simple lines over the top of you know what we can see is like a kind of almost like a floral pattern so from a structural point of view they're quite simplistic um, and he uses text um, but um, the um, artworks cover all the frames so we have um, the structural um, the cultural and the postmodern as well uh, and the subjective and here's another one 
So including the and the mambo and then we've got the car in here. So the artist's world, the mambo brand. This is one of my favourite works in the um, show. It's a um, appropriation of a, another artist who I'll try and dig up the artwork for you to show you in this film. Um, but it's a wood, a liner cut, and but they've added um, the magpie design onto the gown and gave, they've changed around some of the elements of the artwork. Um, to produce this Mambo inspired artwork, but really beautiful, very postmodernist artwork where the artist has appropriated another uh, famous, very famous print.